Let me introduce NetsBlocks, our visual programming environment, to create distributed programs. NetsBlocks is based on Snap, so if I click on this button, it will take me to the interface, and this, look, this should look very familiar to people who have used Snap before. What we added is a few uh, distributed programming abstractions, such, such as message passing and remote procedure calls, to be able to create distributed programs, that is programs that communicate across computers. All right, let's, let's see an example. Let's open the weather application and let's run it. So what you can see is that we integrated Google Maps as an interactive uh, stage. So if I click on the plus or minus buttons, I can zoom in and out. If I click anywhere, it will show the current temperature. Okay. So for example, it's nice warm in Nashville and it's even warmer in Atlanta. Of course, I can actually again zoom out and with the arrow keys I can navigate around so we can hop over to Europe and check the temperature in Paris, for example. Well, it's quite chilly there. All right, so how do we do this? Well, we have services on the server that we can call with remote procedure calls, such as temperature at certain latitude and longitude, and so on. Or on the map side, we have actually uh, RPCs like change map and update map. Let's stop this for a second and add an extra feature to our program. Let's duplicate this block and in addition to the temperature message, let's broadcast a show image message. This will actually show a little weather icon about uh, the current conditions. So if we start this over, let's zoom in again. You can see that in Nashville it's sunny. So if we go over to the west coast, let's say San Jose, it's kind of cloudy there. What about Salt Lake City? It's actually raining or even snowing there. Wow. The website for NetsBlocks is at netsblocks.org and you can actually get more details about some of the technical aspects if you click on our white paper. But let's look at a second example. This one is actually interesting because it combines both messages and remote procedure calls. So let's open the earthquakes example. I just start running it. Let me go to California. That should be more interesting and zoom in a little bit. Maybe like that. Okay, well, let's do this. If I click on here, this will start showing some earthquake information. All right, so what's going on here? So when I clicked, it called a remote procedure call on the server, trigger earthquake messages with these map coordinates. Then the server gets the uh, historical data about it and starts sending messages back to our client. So here is when I received this message with latitude, longitude, size, and time information. And what we do, we basically display a red circle where the size is indicative of the uh, strength or magnitude of the earthquake. So you can see that we keep that getting these messages and we update the map accordingly. So again, this is a combination of a remote procedure call and then messages. In this case, not two programs send each other messages on the client side, but the server send messages back to the client. For our next example, let's look at a very simple two-player game. Each player throws a dice, and whoever has a higher number wins. How does this work? Well, when the green flag is clicked, we'll broadcast ourselves the start message, and also send the message over to the other player to start as well. When we receive this message on our own, we'll basically throw, roll the right roll the dice by picking a random number between 1 and 6 and then sending the message to the other player with that value. Okay. So when the other player receives this start message, the original start message, it basically does the same thing, comes here, 
rolls the dice and sends it over to the other player. Here, when we actually get the message, we have our own dice value and also the value from the other player, so we compare it. If it's a tie, we have to pick a random number again and send the message over, otherwise we'll just declare a winner and a loser. Okay. Now to try this out, uh, I have to have another player as well, but I as also need to introduce a new concept, which is the room or playroom. It's a two-player game, so in this room there are two players, me and the opponent, and that's right now is empty. So I need to invite somebody to play with. So I'm going to invite another user. Well, I logged in as demo, so I'm going to click there, and if you look at this other tab that I also have open, now we can see this message that Brian has invited you to join. Okay, I'm going to accept that. All right, so we get the same code uh, that the other player has, and we can actually start either here or the other player's role. Okay, so you can see that the first player won, six versus two. Let's try this a few more times to see whether we can get a tie. All right, well, no luck. Well, looks like the first player is in a roll, keeps winning. Well, finally it lost, but we're still looking for our tie. Still no tie. Well, that's what happens when you rely on the random number generator. Well, a few more tries, and hopefully we'll run into a situation like that. Well, we may have to spend all night here. Oh, there we go. All right. Our final example is a tic-tac-toe game. It's quite a bit more complicated, and there are a few reasons for this. First of all, it's symmetrical, so both players will run the exact same script. That means that they have to figure out who starts, who is X, whose turn it is, and so on and so forth. Also, the script will have to figure out uh, whether the game is over, who won, and so on. Also, we use cloning, so there is on only a single sprite, and it's cloned eight times to get the nine cells, and so that makes it more difficult as well. Nevertheless, we could do it much simpler uh, using server-side support. So we can implement a few uh, services on the server that will keep track of the game state, figure out whose turn it is, figure out whether it's over and who won, and so on. And then the users on the client side would have to write a much simpler script that uses RPCs uh, to play the game. Anyway, let's play. So in the room, there are two roles. Looks like I'll be O, and then I need to invite somebody to be X. So let me invite demo again. And let's go. All right, so we got the invitations from Brian, so let's accept that. All right, and in order to see this game a little bit better, let me make this window somewhat smaller. All right, so let's start the game. All right, okay. Well. Oh. All right. Looks like it's a close game. Oh, and it ended in a tie. Okay. Well, let's have a X start this time around. Maybe X will be better. Okay. All right. Oh no, we made a mistake. Oh. O1 and X lost. And that concludes our brief demonstration of NETS blocks.